I think usually when we say something will quote unquote change your life, the thought is it will be some new revelation from the universe that'll wake you up from the matrix, it'll make you quit your job, it'll make you propose to the love of your life or break up with them, and you'll never be the same. As in, when we say change your life, we mean change it in a single, irreversible paradigm shift that will happen in one moment and will last for the rest of your life. And these things do happen, right? We do have moments like that in our lives, but by definition, they can't happen that often. So when I say books will change your life, this is not really what I'm promising. Although, you know, maybe. So what do I mean? Let me explain. A thing I love about books and writing in general is that you can find passages that stick in the back of your mind. They're sticky, they just stick with you and they can stay in your head for years. So think of your favorite quote from your favorite book. I'm no scientist to be able to tell you why this exactly stuck in your head, but I would say it's probably a mix of two things. I'd say maybe 50% the statement or the quote is true and resonates with you or resonates with the person you were at the time that you read it, the season in life that you read it, and 50% because the way that it's written and phrased makes it poignant and memorable. And it's this perfect mixture that lets a phrase stick in the back of your mind and that's what makes it life-changing. And here's what I mean by life-changing. You read a book in a cozy spot in your house. You find a phrase or a paragraph or a chapter that sticks in your head. You're like, wow, that's really, wow, okay, interesting. And then you can't forget it. And then you put the book down and you go to work and you're immediately hit with just the craziness of the world, right? The world seemed calm and simple and clean when you were reading in your house in a controlled environment. And now things are not that way. Everything is kind of weird. Probably the book you just read won't make you quit your job or propose to the love of your life. But since it sticks in your head, it changes your life in the individual moment. Some sticky quotes and how they changed my life for me. When I'm tempted to compare myself to someone at work or online, I remember Marcus Aurelius said, do not waste the balance of life left to you in thoughts about other persons. When I see chaos in front of me with a big project or a messy room, I remember Antoine de Saint-Exupéry writing, this morning France was a shattered army in a chaotic population. But if in a chaotic population there is a single consciousness animated by a sense of responsibility, the chaos vanishes. A rock pile ceases to be a rock pile the moment a single man contemplates it, bearing within him the image of a cathedral. When I feel like I'm just spinning in circles and stuck in my situation, but kind of lazy and I don't want to do anything about it, Henry David Thoreau tells me, Why do you stay here and live this mean, moiling life when a glorious existence is possible for you? Those same stars twinkle over other fields than these. And when I'm angry and I feel powerless to choose good, John Steinbeck reminds me, Thou mayest. Now, all these things could be said in much less poetic, less bookish ways, right? Okay, don't compare yourself, focus on your own work. If you have vision, you can help solve problems, try living up to your full potential, or you have the ability to make choices. But those phrases, if they were said to me, would not stick in my head. When I read them in a book, written as they were, in the time that I read them, they stuck with me. And now when I come to decision points, to crossroads, those passages are there to guide me and change my choices in many moments. And life is just made of moments. So for the second half of this video, I just want to read two poems of Robert Frost's that have stuck in my head since the very first time I read them. And since they've stuck in my head, they've changed my actions. And so they've changed my life. And just as a heads up, neither of these poems is going to be the one about the two roads in the wood. Although I do like that one. The first one is called A Time to Talk. And it's very short and it just reads, When a friend calls to me from the road and slows his horse to a meaning walk, I don't stand still and look around on all the hills I haven't hoed and shout from where I am, what is it? No, not as there is time to talk. I thrust my hoe in the mellow ground, blade end up and five feet tall, and plod. I go up to the stone wall for a friendly visit. Now, I'm not a professional analyst of poetry. I'm just gonna tell you what I felt reading this and how it's changed my life in many small moments. For me, this poem has just helped me in moments where I feel maybe I'm a little busy or I have things to do and I get a phone call from my mom or my dad or my wife asks if I wanna watch a movie or something like that. And my first instinct is to just keep working and you know protect my time. And then this poem comes to mind. I think, wow, maybe I have time to talk and what's really important. And then, I, and then I'll pause my work and I'll spend time with them. Again, that's not a huge quote unquote life-changing moment where I like 
thought of this poem and then decided to start a business. But I've probably had at least a dozen or so conversations I wouldn't normally have had thinking about this poem. And that's incredible. And I'm sure it will cause me to have many more awesome conversations throughout my life. So very grateful to that one. And then the second poem is a little longer. And I distinctly remember loving this poem before I even read it just because of the title. And the title is A Serious Step Lightly Taken. And it reads, Between two burrs on the map was a hollow-headed snake. The burrs were hills, the snake was a stream, and the hollow head was a lake. And the dot in front of a name was what should be a town. And there might be a house we could buy for only a dollar down. With two wheels low in the ditch, we left our boiling car and knocked at the door of a house we found. And there today we are. It is turning 300 years on our cisatlantic shore. Her family after family name will make it 300 more. For our name farming here, aloof yet not aloof, enriching soil and increasing stock, repairing fence and roof, a hundred thousand days of front page paper events, a half a dozen major wars, and 45 presidents. And I've not done any research to see if there's uh, an interpretation of this poem or a specific story it's about, but for me, it had me right from the title. As someone who tends to plan a lot and really like to nail down all the details of things before I start, this was really helpful for me and to think, wow, sometimes maybe I'm going to take a step, have no idea what's going to happen. Maybe it's not possible for me to know everything that's going to happen. This is a serious step. I recognize whatever I'm gonna be doing is a serious thing, but I'm going to take it and and just trust that it will work out. And I can't quite know how it'll work out right for the next 300 years, what impacts it will have on the future, but I think it's a good idea and I'm gonna go for it. This poem comes to mind less often than a time to talk, right? There aren't as many serious steps I've been taking, but this poem came to mind when I was considering proposing to my wife and, uh, and I did propose and she did say yes, right? She's my wife. So you could say this poem really was truly life-changing. It wasn't like the only factor in proposing, but it definitely like came to mind as I was making preparations. It's like a, a little, little helpful thought. So I guess you could have books that really do like super change your life in a way. In hindsight, this poem makes me feel okay about the fact that I moved from Pennsylvania to Florida to go to college and just seeing all the different things that have happened because of that. All the friends I've made, the job I have, the people who were groomsmen in my wedding that I would never have met. And then thinking like I could have been somewhere else and that would have been okay too. And uh, I don't know, this poem just makes me feel so at peace about making big decisions. And for somebody who's a huge planner and has a hard time making even little steps, like even struggled for a long time to like decide what fountain drink he wanted at McDonald's, this is a huge blessing for me. And I also just want to note, it doesn't say a serious step stupidly taken or a serious step taken and then no effort put in, right? You can see later in the poem, they are enriching soil and increasing stock, repairing fence and roof. Like wherever they are, whatever decision they made, they're going to work at it and make sure it's good. But it's about saying, hey, I don't know where this is going to go exactly, but I think I like it. Here we are and let's lock in, let's do it. So anyway, I would love to hear from you. What is a quote or a poem or a passage or a chapter from a book that has just stuck in your head since you read it and how has it changed your life in small or big ways? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.